So, first thing I do is twist this wire. I've done this with floral wire too. It's a lot easier to bend. You don't have to use so many pliers. I don't know, I want this to be a little bit less twisted actually. So this is kind of a different tree. This is like this tree right here with this small trunk. And I'm doing a few different types. So I got this, this armature. It's gonna have really long things. I just want it to look jungly. This one's gonna have a long tr tree trunk. This one's gonna have a really long tree trunk. And then this one's gonna be more medium-ish with lots of branches. They're all virtually the same thing, just different styles. You can make just wire armature trees, but I really wanted some of the thicker trunks. So we're filling it out with aluminum foil and hot glue and whatnot. Okay, so I twist it up like that at first and I go through and clip these branches. Same with the roots. And then I just kind of gnarl these up quite a bit, especially these ones with the longer branches. It will add good detail. This is just going to be our skeleton for our aluminum foil. So that's the next spot, next part. So let's do one of these trees. I'm going to cut some strips or tear some strips in the foil and then start with the branches. And I'm just going to, well, first I'm going to twist it around these. And this is going to fill it out quite a bit, give it some bark-like texture, and it's going to be nice and firm. You'll see. You'll see when you do yours. If it rips like that, you can use some hot glue now. Just hold it together. I wouldn't use too much hot glue just yet. But if you need it, you need it. All right, finally I'm done covering this with aluminum foil. It takes a little while. I haven't found a quick trick to doing it yet, but that's our finished result. You could easily just spray paint this black and then paint it up from there. And it would just be your everyday tree. But I want to go one step further and make some junk, make it look like a jungle tree. So, so with my scrap pieces of foam, I think we're gonna have. We're gonna be making a base for this thing, and I'm not gonna spend too much time carving this up. It's gonna kind of round it off. So the roots will grab it easier. Okay. And we're just gonna plop that guy right on there like that with some hot glue. So, there is our base. Now, we are gonna be adding a layer of hot glue to this. Um, you can let some of the aluminum foil show through. That's fine. It's just to give it a little bit more detail and to hold in the foil. I don't know, just add a bunch of glue strands to the outside of all this foil. Don't worry too much about covering all the foil. Like I said, it's gonna add some tree texture to it too. The roots are the fun part because you can just straight up draw on roots with hot glue. Like that. Looks great. It's gonna look even better when it's painted. Okay, now I've purposely kind of made a mess with this hot glue. See those strands? And you get that a lot working with hot glue, especially if you're not too patient. Um, I'm not gonna leave it here, but I'm also not gonna pick it off. I'm gonna show you my way 
of fixing that. And you can either use like this lighter, this torch, or a lighter, or a heat gun, or anything like that, and just add some heat real quick to all those strands. It works pretty good to get rid of all that. See that? And you get a nice tree. The next part is going to be adding some of this jute twine. So, piece of jute twine. Normally I separate it. I think I might only separate part of it this time. So you just want to unravel some of these. Let's do it to there. That way it can start out as one big vine and go to littler vines. Glue this part to the base somewhere. It's kind of bare over here and I want to cover up some of this. So, I am just going to put a dab of hot glue and then work my way up from there. And you'll want to, you don't want to glue it down 100%. Just add some glue randomly to keep it in place in spots. Ravel it around this. I'm gonna leave it a little bit loose. Just glue it at the top. Now we end up with something like that. And we paint it, we're gonna tame some of these pieces of jute that's going all over. Ready to be painted. Show you one up close. Show you a few up close. So you can get an idea of how I wrapped the vines. I think they're gonna be pretty cool when we're done. Okay. Now here's the deal, airbrushing paint onto here or hand painting it isn't going to work very good. So I have some Liquitex spray paint of different colors that I'm going to spray on here. I'm using Liquitex because it doesn't melt foam. I got a video about that if you want to see it. All right, here is everything spray painted. Like I said, I just did a color that I had. If I had a choice, I would have spray painted it black. And you can see it didn't quite get all of the aluminum foil painted. It's kind of hard to get it painted really good, but the next layer should cover it up nice and easy. Right, and I got a little mixture of black paint, black house paint and PVA glue that I'm going to be painting these with. Not only is this gonna be a base layer of paint to work up from, but it's also going to hold everything intact and harden up all the jute twine. I really like to paint down. You have all these like frillies on this stuff, all that. I really like to work on painting that down a lot more, except for maybe at the top. On the top, you can leave a lot of it there because it's going to help catch the foliage later on. But for now, we just want to get it all painted black. That's one down, and I got ten more to go, so we're just going to go off camera and finish painting these. Alright, so as you saw, I did have to spray paint some black paint over it. It just wasn't sticking to all the metal bits. Um, I guess the first layer, I missed some spots, so I should have sprayed two layers before painting it black. But I just ended up buying the cheap black paint and spraying it over everything since I'd already painted over the styrofoam and whatnot. I think I'm gonna do some grays, some greens, and some browns. I'm just gonna do a light layer of brown. I'm gonna overbrush a lot and kind of blend it into the black undercoat. I just did a thin layer over most of it, all except for the vines maybe.
It's just a nice light layer of brown. I was gonna use gray too, but I think I'm just gonna skip over the green because these are looking pretty good already. Darkish green, it's not dark, dark. So we're just gonna dab it on places. There are all of our trees painted with the green and the brown. I think I am going to add a little bit brighter of a green to some of it too. Because this is all pretty dark. It looks good. It looks kind of like a dark haunted tree. But I need some more variation. So we're going to do that too. I'm going to add a little bit less than I did of the darker green. So that way we also see the darker green. Like so. Just to detail the vines a little bit, I'm adding a little bit of olive green to the vines. That vine's actually pretty cool. Okay, now instead of highlighting this with a cream like I normally do, creamish color or white, we're going to highlight it with a light green. I don't know, that looks pretty good. Though I think I might want to actually add a little bit of a cream highlight in the end. We'll see. Okay. Really light highlight. Okay, now I'm going to be using this dark polyfill. On the tops of the trees. Just as kind of a base layer for the leaves. Um, you can just add direct uh, clump foliage, but I really like to do this and blend up the clump foliage. It just makes, makes things look a lot more realistic. You'll see in the end. If you've seen me do trees before, I know you'll probably see, or if you see them on my Etsy shop, this is the way I go about it. Um, it might seem like it's going to be fragile, but in the end, we're really going to harden things up and it's going to be solid. You'll be able to pick it up from the top like this. So, you'll see. So I've been using rubber cement for all this lately. It makes less of a mess than spray adhesive. I do like the spray adhesive. It's a little bit faster. But this is a lot more controlled. So I'm just going to add some glue to each of the ends of these ones, these branches, and then add the polyfill, like so. This one I'm trying to get it wrapped around pretty good because there's not like a lot of branches to claw onto it, like my little plastic trees. And I've been finding, I know it's cliche to say but using less of the polyfill is actually better. Less is more, so it's better for the end result. It's just gonna thicken up the clump foliage and kind of look like branches underneath. That's why I use the dark brown. There's also a green one you can get from Woodland Scenics. So if you'd rather just put green polyfill on and then that you can do that i really like using the brown just adds a little extra little layer of color to my piece that i'm working on and there's our end result looks pretty good even just like that all right i'm gonna let that dry for at least an hour Possibly even overnight is getting kind of late and I got other stuff to work on, but that's what we got so far All right now we're gonna take a tree that looks like this and turn it into something like this um, You can use spray adhesive and just dip it or you can use some rubber cement like I'm gonna use And do the same thing
And this is just chopped up clump foliage that's mixed together. I believe it's light green and medium green Woodland Scenics clump foliage that I put in a small coffee grinder, ground it up real fine, and made ourselves some nice blended foliage. And there is our jungle tree. Looks pretty good already. Now, the next step, we're gonna be hardening it up, but this is gonna to have to sit for a little bit. Make sure the rubber cement dries before you do the next step, or you're gonna make a more of a mess and lose some of your foliage. Okay, so the way I'm gonna be showing you isn't just isn't the only way I do it, but I wanted to show you a different way than I did it last time to really seal in all this clump foliage. Cause right now you'll see it just falls off. Quite a bit of it falls off. And a lot of it's gonna fall off in the next process too. I usually save these little bits in another container for bushes and stuff like that. So, okay. So I'm gonna be using this jug of watered down PVA glue. And with this, all I'm going to do is take my, oh, we'll need this too. So you want this, you just want normal, what is this, this moss flocking, just as a detail in a filler, a space filler. So what we're going to be doing, if these fit, we're just going to be dipping this right in the glue like so. I like to let it run off a little bit. You don't have to let it run off, but it helps. And then sprinkle some of this clump, uh, not the clump foliage, some of this moss ground cover. onto our tree. Just as a little bit of extra detail. Okay, and you'll see super wobbly. These little bits are gonna hang down some. They're gonna give it a little bit more jungly of a look, I think. So I'm gonna leave them there. If not, we can clip them off when they dry. I'm going to be using plastic plants and clump foliage, maybe some static grass and moss. I don't know just yet. We'll see how it looks. I think that we can add just a few of these. Perhaps decorate the base with those. Punch these ones in. And we'll be good. Let's let's see how that'll work. I'm gonna try to go around the roots just a little bit. I don't want to waste too much time with it. But I also don't want to ignore it because I have them there for a reason. Alright. And that is the start on the base. Looks pretty good like that. Okay. So let's go ahead and drill a hole right there. You don't really have to drill it. That's a glue inserted into the hole. We got ourselves a little jungle plant. Right now I'm using this. This is a big plant from Hobby Lobby or a craft store. I don't know which one I got it at, but. We're gonna chop off a little bits of pieces of here. Let's do it right here. And I think I'm gonna put one of these here. Like so. Okay, there's our jungle base. I think I am going to add a little bit more detail. Let's see how this looks. Is that too dark? That 
might be too dark. I think we're going to add it anyway. We can have some darker little bushes around here. There we go. Now we got ourselves a jungle tree. That's looking great. I think they'll be happy with this tree. I'm happy with it, so I imagine somebody else would be happy with it too. That's how things are looking. All that's left is a little bit of spray varnish. And I'm gonna do that off camera with my airbrush because it makes a lot of noise. But when I do it, I'm really gonna soak this in. Maybe I'll show you guys a little bit with it muted, but we'll see. So I think what I'll do is I'll start airbrushing all this and then I'll just transition into the final pics and video of this terrain. And really it turned out great. I'm very happy with these trees. Okay, so you might be able to hear the fan and whatnot, but I figured I'd just go ahead and airbrush on camera because I normally don't do that. And I always wear a mask and use lots of ventilation. I have a big fan above my desk that sucks everything out. So I really soak this in. If you enjoyed this in-depth experience but are also curious about a more condensed version, I've got you covered. I've created a shorter scripted video that covers the same process in a quicker format. Give it a watch and let me know which style you prefer. The comprehensive real-time experience or a brief and straightforward guide.